It happens every day in workplaces throughout the world. All the causes of fire vary from situation to situation. Most fires share a common factor. They start out small. But if a fire is discovered soon enough, it can be extinguished before it gets out of control with a portable fire extinguisher. Portable fire extinguishers are a con site in the workplace and are also standard equipment on fire engines and emergency vehicles. They're considered the first line of defense when a fire occurs. Yet the untrained person, extinguishers may provide a false and potentially dangerous sense of security. Make no mistake, portable fire extinguishers are effective firefighting tools, but only if they're used properly and on the types of fires they've been designed for. Portable fire extinguishers come in a variety of sizes. Some weigh only two and a half pounds. Others can weigh several hundred pounds. Yet the effectiveness of an extinguisher isn't just determined by size. It's also determined by the strength and knowledge of the person using it. There are several types of portable fire extinguishers. Each is designed to fight a specific class of fire and may not be effective on other types of fires. So, proper selection and placement of extinguishers is important. Some fires may not be easy to extinguish. Fighting large fires or fires in complex situations require the use of protective clothing or specialized firefighting techniques. Before you attempt to extinguish the fire, it's important for you to know what the fire you're dealing with, how to operate the extinguisher, and how to correctly put out the fire. Fire is a chemical chain reaction between fuel, heat, and oxygen. This relationship is known as the fire tetrahedron. If you interrupt the chemical chain reaction, or take away any of the other three elements, you put out the fire. This is what an extinguisher does. Fire can develop with a number of different fuels, and extinguishers for one type of fuel aren't always effective on other fuels. Fire is divided into four classifications, and extinguishers are available for each one. Class A fires involve wood, cloth, paper, rubber, and plastic. Water is often used to cool the fuel and extinguish the fire. Class B fires involve flammable or combustible liquids, gas, or grease. These fires require extinguishers like carbon dioxide, foam, dry chemical, or halon, which deprive the fire of oxygen oxygen or interfere with the chemical chain reaction. Class C fires involve energized electrical equipment that may present a shock hazard to someone attempting to extinguish the fire. Class D fires involve combustible metals such as magnesium or lithium. These fires require a dry powder which smothers the fire and doesn't react with the burning metal. Extinguishers suitable for these different fires are categorized in the same manner as the class of fire they work on. To help identify a proper extinguisher, two types of sinks have been developed. One set uses a letter and shape for each of the four classes of fire. The other set displays pictures which identify both the fires the extinguisher can be used on and the fires it cannot be used on. All extinguishers should use one or the other of the classification systems. While certain extinguishers, like these multi-purpose dry chemical extinguishers, can be used on A, B, and C fires, no extinguisher is effective on all four classes of fire. In fact, extinguishers designed for one class of fire may be extremely dangerous when used on another class. For example, a water extinguisher is not recommended for use on a class B or flammable liquid fire because it may spread the fire. Portable extinguishers use a variety of extinguishing agents. Water, foam, carbon dioxide, halogenated agents, dry chemical, and dry powder. Pressurized water extinguishers are commonly found in office areas and are very effective on small fires involving ordinary combustible materials. A water extinguisher weighs about 20 
55 pounds, so it may be necessary to place it on the ground. To operate this unit, pull the safety pin, breaking the seal. Now, hold the hose in one hand, aim it with fire, and seize the handle. Water extinguishers may reach 30 to 40 feet away when first discharged. This allows you greater safety in approaching the fire. Aim the stream of water at the base of the fire, and apply water from side to side in a sweeping motion. As the water pressure drops off, you may need to move closer to the fire. Do so only if your initial efforts have been successful in slowing the fire. The pressurized stream may scatter the flaming debris. To avoid this, as you get closer, use your fingertip to change the water stream to a spray. Water extinguishes a fire by absorbing the heat, so it's important to make sure all the fuel is thoroughly soaked. Separate the fuel and continue soaking it. The extinguisher will be in about one minute if used continuously. Another water-based unit is the foam extinguisher, commonly known as AFFF or aqueous film-forming foam. Foam is designed to extinct Class B flammable liquid fires, but also be effective on Class A fires. There are two types of AFFF extinguishers. These units look like pressurized water extinguishers. The major difference is the apparating nozzle which injects air into the foam. One contains a pre-mixed foam solution. The other contains only water which passes through a foam cartridge when the extinguisher is discharged. The foam creates a blanket which smothers the fuel. To operate the extinguishers, pull the pin, aim the nozzle, and squeeze the handle. AFFF extinguishers empty in about one minute. They're most effective at a range of 10 to 20 feet. Depending on the size of the fire, it may be necessary to start at the maximum range and then work your way in. There are several techniques for using an AFFF extinguisher on flammable liquids. For spills, splash the foam directly in front of the fire. If the fire is an open container, play the discharge against the inside back wall of the container. This spreads the foam back over the fire. The foam acts as a barrier to exclude oxygen from the fire and prevent vaporization of the fuel. If you are unable to play the foam off the back wall, you can spray the foam directly into the liquid. It's important, however, to momentarily divert the stream so the foam blanket can seal itself and completely cover the liquid. Another method for open container fires is to stand back and lob the foam so it falls over the fire. AFFF e extinguishers are also used to prevent fires on flammable liquid spills. The foam blocks the release of vapors, preventing ignition. The next type of extinguisher uses carbon dioxide, or CO2, which is intended for Class B and C fires. CO2 stops combustion by displacing oxygen in the air surrounding a fire. CO2 extinguishers come in two types. Small turtles have an attached horn, and larger units have detachable handheld horns. To operate the smaller unit, pull the release pin, raise the horn, aim and squeeze the handle. CO2 should be applied as close to the base of the fire as possible. To operate the larger mill, remove the pin, hold the horn in its hand grip, aim the fire, and squeeze the handle. It's very important to remember not to grab the horn while operating these extinguishers. CO2 extinguishers emit a frigid gas so the horn gets very cold. For fires involving electrical equipment, aim to discharge directly at the flames. Continue discharging the extinguisher to assure the fire is out and to prevent the fire from reigniting. De-energize the equipment as soon as possible to eliminate the electrical hazard. CO2 extinguishers have a limited range and are affected by wind and draft. 
halogenated extinguishers are generally rated for class B and C fires. However, some may have a class A rating as well. Halon, like CO2, is a gas. To operate the extinguisher, remove the safety pin, aim the nozzle, and squeeze the hand. In some situations, it may be necessary to begin operating the extinguisher from the maximum range of 16 feet, and then move closer as the fire diminishes. Apply the agent at the near edge of the fire, and rapidly sweep from side to side toward the back of the fire. On Class B fires, Halon is generally twice as effective and has twice the range of CO2. Like CO2, it will be affected by wind. The use of halon on fire may produce toxic products, so these extinguishers should only be used in well-ventilated areas. Anyone operating a halon extinguisher should avoid breathing the gas. Another extinguisher is the dry chemical type. There are two kinds. Ordinary dry chemical, which is effective on class B and C fires, and multi-purpose dry chemical, which is effective on A, B, and C fires. Dry chemical extinguishers available in two designs cartridge operated and stored pressure to operate the cartridge type remove the nozzle which breaks the seal push down on the cartridge puncture lever which pressurizes the extinguisher now aim the nozzle and squeeze cartridge type extinguishers have the discharge left at the nozzle to operate the stored pressure model remove the safety pin take the hose in one hand it and squeeze the lever with the other hand. Discharge from the maximum range and apply a sweeping motion. It may be necessary to move in closer as the pressure drops, providing the agent has been initially effective in knocking down the fire. Multi-purpose dry chemical extinguishers are effective on class A, B, and C fires. The agent tends to soften and stick and comes in contact with surfaces. So for Class A fires, it's important to thoroughly cover the burning embers to form a coating which isolates fuel and prevents reignition. Multi-purpose dry chemicals do not penetrate the surface of ordinary combustibles, so it's important when the fire is up to break apart the material and continue to coat it. Compared to CO2 or Elon, dry chemical extinguishers are less affected by wind. The final class of fire is Class D, combustible metal fires. These fires typically happen in machining areas. They're extinguished with either a handheld dry powder extinguisher or loose dry powder applied by scoop or shovel. Combustible metal fires are persistent, hard to extinguish, and highly reactive especially when metal is moist with water, machine lubricants, or other fluids. Applying a wrong type of extinguish agent, like water on a combustible metal fire, could cause a violent reaction. Remember, dry powder is not the same as dry chemical, and the two should not be confused. Make sure the extinguisher you're using is rated D, combustible metals. Dry powder extinguisher are cartridge operated. To operate, remove the nozzle, which breaks the seal. Push the cartridge puncture lever. Aim the nozzle and squeeze. Discharge the extinguisher from its maximum range of 6 to 8 feet. When control is established, ease back the nozzle to produce a soft, heavy flow, which allows you to get close without scattering the burning metal. Hot spots appear on the surface, continue to apply the agent. Remember, the metal remains quite hot for some time. Larger firefighting applications may require wheeled extinguishers, which are available in many sizes and with a variety of agents. Wheeled extinguishers have an operating range of a 40 feet and then in anywhere from 30 seconds to two and a half minutes. Yet while these devices have a much greater range, they're also more difficult to use and require thorough training. A fire large enough to require this type of experience.
extinguisher is dangerous. You are not sure of your capability, or you don't know how to operate the extinguisher, leave the firefighter to train firefighters. Regardless of the type of extinguisher used, it's imperative to recharge the extinguisher immediately after use, even if it's been only partially emptied. Recharging should always be done by a qualified person. There are other aspects of using a portable fire extinguisher that are equally important, like when to use one, when not to use one, and when to stop using one and get to safety. It's important to understand the limitation of portable fire extinguishers. For example, most completely discharge in less than one minute, some as quickly as eight seconds. They have a limited range and a limited amount of agent. And most portable Fire extinguishers have restrictions as to the types of fires they can extinguish. If you discover a fire, first sound the alarm, then call the fire department, regardless of how small the fire seems. Remember, fire can grow from a small blaze to a roaring inferno in as little as two minutes. Event the fire. If the fire is large, burning out of control, or creating lots of smoke, it's already too late. If it hasn't reached that stage yet, then ask yourself these important questions. What's burning, and what type of area is the fire in? Is there thick smoke, or are there any other hazards? Do I have correct equipment to fight the fire? Do I have the training to fight a fire alone? Of course, nothing guarantees that a fire will never happen. However, Careful planning and training are important steps in fire prevention. Make sure the fire extinguisher matches the potential fire hazard and is in the proper location. It should be clearly identified and easily reached. Know the difference between Class A, Class B, Class C, and Class D fires. And get the proper training, because there's probably going to come time when you'll need to use a portable fire extinguisher. <laughs>